I, I'll let you get by and then I'll start. Get, oh, I was approved for the oh, injection, good. for the injection, so I just gotta oh, good. find out when they're gonna start shipping it to the specialty pharmacy that it comes from. No, yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, they really? They have to. I don't know, I got paid $200, $34. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't get my job at $34. Cents, so I, that's the man. Well, we actually got a bill the other day from, from a, for 30, about $0.34 cents from a, a doctor. It's like, really? So we have to write a check for $0.34? Cents? Right. Where's the paper? Good morning. things that we've missed over the last week since we've not been together. Then right. let us prepare our hearts as we uh, sing right as it best at the stars of the morning. Let us all stand together.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, the radiance of all faithful people, you brought the nations to the light and grace of your rising. Fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all the world through him, who is the true light and the bright morning star, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You're welcome, be seated. Our first lesson for today is found in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Pardon me, the third chapter. St. Paul writes, This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Jesus Christ, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace and that was given to me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my uh, understanding of the mystery of Christ. For in former generations this mystery is not made known to humankind, as it has been now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and shares in the promise of Christ the gospel. Of this gospel I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ to make everyone see what is plain, the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities and heavenly places. This was in accordance with the holy and eternal purpose that he has carried uh, out in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Here ends the lesson. Let us read responsibly the 72nd Psalm. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and war with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness. Let him defend the needy among the people, rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon adore from one generation to another. Let him come down like rain upon the moon field, like showers of water the earth. In his time may the righteous flourish, and let there be abundance of peace, and the moon shall be no more. And then to verse 10. May the kings of Tarshish and of the Isles pay tribute, and the kings of Sheba and Seba offer gifts. May all kings bow down before him, and all the nations do him justice. For the king delivers the poor who cry out in distress, and the oppressed and those who have no help. He has compassion of the lowly of the poor, and preserves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence he redeems their lives, the precious is their blood in his sight. King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is this child who has been born King of the Jews? 
For we have observed his star rising, and we have come to pay him homage. So when King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together the chief priests and scribes and people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him that he was to be born in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets. You, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah are by no means the least of the rulers of Judah. For from you a ruler shall come who is a shepherd, to shepherd my people Israel. So Herod secretly called the wise men, learned from the exact time that the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search diligently for this child, and when you have found him, bring word to me, so that I may also go and pay him homage. So when they heard the kings, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at his rising and stopped over the place that the child was. When they saw, saw where, the child, uh, where the star stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering into a house, they saw the child with Mary and his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening up the treasure chest, the tress they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been then warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless this word today that we might be inspired by your presence. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome to be seated. This is going to be a relatively short word today. I just want to point out one observation about the wise men. We do, as we've had in the past, know who they are. They, of course, came from Iran. They were Persians. They probably at one time were part of that great Persian kingdom or powerful rulers at one time when Persia was the superpower that was eventually overthrown by the Greeks. If you want to watch real history, I'm just kidding about this, you can go and watch the movie The 300, right? Because that's real Greek history, of course. But remember, according to the Jews, the Persians were the good guys, the Greeks were the bad guys. But the Greeks came in and obliterated the Persians eventually. They eventually won over a series of battles. They became the next great superpower. And all the Persians receded in their power. And so you have these rich and powerful kings or rulers of Persia who then made a living traveling around the world meeting out their wisdom. And so that's who these men from the East were likely, who they were when they came to visit with Jesus. But here's the message that I want to give to you today. They were latecomers, right? When did they finally come to the manger? Well, they didn't come to the manger, right? Our crash is wrong. They came to visit Jesus in the house after he had been displaced or taken from there. It seemed like Mary and Joseph were going to stay a while in Bethlehem and maybe make a living there. So they moved into a house. They finally were getting some nice accommodations. Jesus was no longer in a stable. How old was he? I don't know. He might have been a month or two old. He could have been a year old. He might have been upwards of two years of age. But they were now in a house. The wise men came to see him. They were latecomers to the party. Right? So it reminds me, my, my grandmother used to, she kind of used to get really a little bit frustrated with this. Uh, she was a big fan of, I can't remember the, the, the team that preceded the Pittsburgh Penguins. Somebody might be able to tell me here. What were they called again? There was a hockey team, a semi-pro hockey team in Pittsburgh before the Penguins. She, do you know? Is it the Wrens? No, I don't think so. That's Hornets. Hornets! That was it. Hornets. Yes. So she was a big fan. I'm like, wow, oh, my grandmother's a fan of hockey. And then, of course, the Penguins. She was a huge fan of the Penguins, even though they were hapless and horrible and terrible. And there were maybe, what, 2,000 people who come to watch Penguins when they first played. Because they were horrible. They were a bad team. All of a sudden, they became good. Mary Lemieux comes along, and ooh, everybody starts cramming in there. Everybody sees bandwagon jumpers, right? They jump on the bandwagon because now the penguins are good, right? And so that creates some resentment from the folks who said, but I've been here all along. Now, here's the thing about my grandmother. She never resented that. She's like, well, good. I'm glad they're finally successful. She was thrilled by that. But some of the old time fans were all upset. All these people jumping on the bandwagon now that they're successful. What do you think God's attitude is towards bandwagon jumpers? There's plenty of room. Jump aboard. 
I'm so glad you're finally here. The wise men were the guys who came late to the party, but they were not turned away. They were most welcome, and because they were most welcome, they saw the one who would transform the entire planet. That was the Messiah, the one who was promised by God. And so we should never feel bad about entering into the kingdom late in our lives. I've had folks, you know, 50, 60 years of age, oh, I just, you know, they, their lives were transformed later in life. Well, good for you. You're always welcome. It's never too late. God welcomes everybody, even those who come late to the party, even like those, like the wise men. And so we give thanks this day for the latecomers, the late bloomers, the people who come after the party is over. God always takes the opportunity to welcome them home. And so I, I just finish with one last story. On Christmas Day, I felt so bad. Christmas Day, uh, I obviously had mixed messaging about when our services were. So we had one couple who came with the service right when we got to communion. They're like, we oh, missed the whole service. I said, don't panic. I will do a mini service for you. They were late in coming to the service, but we want to make sure they don't miss out on Jesus. Because Jesus, doesn't matter how late you are, Jesus always promises to be a blessing to you. So let's, let's give thanks this day. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the latecomers in faith. Those who come to you later in life, we're just so grateful that they come at all. We just pray that you continue to work with your Holy Spirit in this world. For we know that we yearn for, this, for the people of our community, of our country, of our world to know you. There are some who have already got their heads down and waiting for the world to end. And they're kind of relishing in that. I'm not relishing in that. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm hopeful that you've not given up on this world yet. That you are still calling people to you. Because you've always got room for one more. And for this I give thanks. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing together our hymn of the day. Hymn number 302. As with glad this minimal.
Let's confess together the faith that we share. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us Loving Father, we give you thanks again for this day and for the beauty of it, for you created it. You've given us life, and for that we are grateful. You know the cares and concerns upon our hearts, and we are grateful that you hear them. So we continue to lift up those who need you today for Carrie and Rocco and Tina and Jackie, Harry and Carissa, for Jeff, Judy, and Joanne, and Mrs. Byers, for Cheryl, for Jim, Mikey, for Ruth. We also lift up this day John and Bob and Mike and Pam, Sammy and Mikey and Joseph, Yazzie, for Pauline and Dorothy and Gail, for all those guys who struggle with cancer. And we pray for your blessing to be upon their families as well, too. That you give them the strength and courage to get through these days that lie ahead. And wherever their journey may take them, Lord, we just pray that you continue to walk with them and surround them with your love. We pray again for those places of violence. We lift up the Holy Land and pray for that to be a place of peace and justice. We also lift up the Ukraine. We lift up uh, places in our own communities. For once again, we just, uh, uh, every day it seems we hear about another great tragedy. And we just pray, Lord, for the courage to be able to stand up uh, and encourage God to, to, to bring Jesus where there is heartache and pain so that folks have something better to live for than materialistic uh, games. We lift up, Lord, also our community partners in faith, for our Bishop Wilma Kuchera, for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, for our partners in our Slovak Zion Synod, and pray that you continue to bless them in this new year as we look forward to being of service to you. And Lord, whatever else is on our hearts and minds, we just take a moment of silent prayer to lift these concerns to you. For all those who have been away from home this Christmas season, we ask that it would have been a blessed Christmas season regardless. And just pray that you bring them home to their families soon, especially for all of our men and women in military, wherever they might be stationed. We pray for the continued safety and peace. All of these things, Lord, we commend to you and give to your care and your keeping, knowing that you hear them and respond to your kindness and graciousness for us. For it is in your precious name we give thanks. Amen. I'm just going to stand here today I'm, uh, and just wish you all peace. And you're welcome to either shake hands with those around or just wave, that's fine. But may the peace of the Lord be with you always today. Peace be with you. God, maker of all things, for it is through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. 
ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we've gathered in today in the feeding of the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. That's right. Give thanks and prayers. It is indeed our right duty and our joy that we should at all times and places give thanks and pray to Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. For it is by the leading of a star that he was shown forth to all the nations. In the waters of the Jordan you proclaimed him to be your beloved Son. In the miracle of the water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise that you made to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For as he who in the night which he betrayed took bread and gave thanks after he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink you all of it, for this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us therefore proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. It is with this bread and cup that we remember your word dwelling amongst us, full of grace and truth. Remembering our new birth and his death and resurrection, we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Come amongst us to bless this meal, and may your word take flesh in us, awaken your people, fill us with your light, and bring us the gift of peace on earth. Come, Come Holy Jesus. Spirit. We all praise and glory be yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Let us pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We invite you to... Prepare the meal which God has so graciously provided us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Savior Jesus given and shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus bless us and keep us in His grace and peace now and forever. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for the gift of new life that we have in Jesus Christ. Those who come early and those who come late receive that same blessing. And for this we give thanks, for we all are latecomers to faith, Gentiles by birth, but yet, Lord, you've come for us as well, and we give thanks. So let us depart this place confident in our salvation, the gift of Jesus Christ, that we might proclaim this love to all the world. For he asks us all in your precious name. Amen. I receive the Lord's blessing this day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us sing our closing hymn for today. We ask you to please refrain from singing the pit hymn. It may be the same melody, but different words. Praise the Lord of heaven. Much more holy purpose here today.